The city of Grand Forks is a town with 50,000 people, which rises to about 75,000 during the school years. It is located in the northeast of North Dakota, just on the border of Minnesota. The reason the city is called Grand Forks is because the French first named it Les Grands Forks. I'm not good at French. Uh, and it flows from Winnipeg, Canada, all the way down to Fargo, North Dakota. But it's called the Forks because the Red Lake River flows out to the side and into Minnesota. I'm here in front of the Sitting Bull statue at the Ralph Engelstead Arena. This area where the rivers connect has been a trading spot for Native Americans for hundreds of years before the British and the French and the Americans came in. The first European explorers that found the area were the aforementioned French fur trappers in the 1700s. After that, the land was not really used, but it was officially incorporated into the United States in 1818 when the United States received the land from the British Empire. At this time, Native Americans pretty much controlled the land, but after years of war between the Americans and the Natives, the Americans gained control of the land. A U.S. post office was established on the site on the 15th of June, 1870, and the name of the town was officially changed from the French Les Grands Fours. to Grand Forks in English. Alexander Griggs, a steamboat captain, is regarded as the father of Grand Forks. His steamboat froze on the Red River on a voyage in late 1870, which forced the captain and his crew to spend the winter camping in Grand Forks. Griggs platted the community in 1875, and the city was officially incorporated on the 2nd of February 1881. The new area was attractive for its low land prices and opportunity. The Great Northern Railway and the Northern Pacific Railway both came into the city in the 1880s, which helped it grow even more. As the city grew, a streetcar system was put in, electric lighting was added, and in 1954, Grand Forks was chosen as a location for a new Air Force base. Funny fact, my neighbors lived there for a while, which is a crazy coincidence. Fast forward about 50 years, and in 1997, the Red River Flood destroyed much of the downtown. It cost about $3.5 billion worth of damages, but luckily, no one died. Behind me is downtown Grand Forks. This is where all the magic happens. We got a gun store because what little Midwestern town doesn't? There's also a train yard that directly intersects the town. You can see it from lots of places. Behind me is the Ralph Engelstead Arena. It opened in October of 2001 and it hosts hockey and basketball games. The arena was named after Mr. Ralph Engelstead, who was an alumni of the University of North Dakota. So many like flies here today. He graduated from the university in the 1950s with a business degree and went on to become the owner of the Palace Imperial Hotel in Las Vegas. He made a ton of money which means he wanted to give back to his university and as the story goes the university couldn't decide what to spend the money on so he was like you know what we're gonna build a stadium it's gonna be a really nice stadium and we're gonna name it after myself. So Mr. Engelstead gave the university about a hundred million dollars and they built this thing. The arena is said to be the Taj Mahal of hockey arenas in the United States due to its many very nice amenities. For example, the concourses of the arena are covered in granite flooring. Each seat for spectators is made out of cherry wood with weather, leather, upholstery, escalators between levels bring people around easier and it has one of the nicest LCD screens in any stadium.
The University of North Dakota is a public university in Grand Forks. It was established in 1883, six years before the United States state of North Dakota even existed. It is the oldest university in the state. It was founded with a liberal arts foundation and has expanded to include scientific research. It is the only university in the state of North Dakota with law and medicine. These days, it is well known for the John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace Scientists. One interesting fact is that Chinese airlines pay for students to go to this university and get their degree in flying airplanes. The students just have to agree to fly for that airline for 10 years. The downtown area is pretty nice too. There's a solid amount of shops, restaurants, uh, hotels, and other things to do. I was there on a Wednesday in the middle of the day, so it was pretty dead. But I imagine, you know, on Saturdays, you know, during the school year, there are plenty of people out and about doing things. Here's the town, the main center of the town. That bridge goes straight to North Dakota, or uh, Minnesota, and the town of East Grand Forks, which is right there, which is, I mean, it's basically the same town, like it's just a bridge, uh, so people know each other and stuff, but I'm gonna go over there, see what's up on the other side. City. I was just up there and this is East Grand Forks. Uh, behind me there are a ton of biking slash walking trails and this is the Red River. And uh, there's a place around here where it splits from one river to two. I'm gonna try to find that place somewhere around here. And these are the forks. The forks of Grand Forks. They're pretty big, I guess. Kind of, I don't know what the right, right size for uh, river, uh, river forks to be. But right here, we got the Red River, which flows from Winnipeg, Canada, way up there, all the way down to somewhere on the map that's on screen right now. But right here, it switches out and goes this way. And this is the Red Lake River. So this is the Red River, Red Lake River. Not very creative with the names. And very sad history time. The red in Red River comes from the blood of the dead Native Americans, and I guess some Americans too, but the dead people who died in the battles between the Americans and the Native Americans in this area. So, nice river, not such nice history. Oh look, and my shirt is, my shirt's also red, so that works today. Right there is the flag of the Holy City, uh, Vatican City, in Rome, Italy. That's the first time I've ever seen it. It's really interesting. Obviously it's a Catholic school or church or whatever, but I have never seen that flag in the wild. That is trippy. Behind me here is the post office of East Grand Forks, and it's a nice building. I don't know. Post offices usually just look boring, and this one's actually kind of nice, so thumbs up for the post office. Kind of surprisingly, there's also a transit system in town. They run buses about every hour at most stops, but some have a bit more service. And there is also a bike share where you can uh, rent a bike, drive it or ride it across town, and then put it back in another stall. And if it's under 30 minutes, it's free. All right, if you got this far, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. If you got this far, you obviously like the content. And I'm trying to hold my computer like a vlog camera and it's about to fall. So thanks for watching, have a great day. Peace out.